Hello, everybody. Today, I've got an update for you on gold and particularly as it relates to the gold to silver ratio, which I think is getting a little bit long in the tooth. I think uh, lots of people are aware that gold has had a big uh, run this year. In fact, year to date, if you look at that green line on your screen, you can see it's actually outperforming the S&P 500 by roughly about 3% um, or so. And that's uh, that says a lot because the S&P is once again doing very well this year. So gold's really, really doing well. Uh, but that's kind of the point. As much as I remain very bullish gold and gold is uh, bullish from a trending perspective uh, on our market rover trending software um, and structurally there's a lot of reasons to be bullish gold. It, it might be getting a bit long in the tooth um, relative to other hard assets like for example silver. So what we're considering here is to uh, reduce a little bit of our gold position and uh, add to things like silver. Remember, this is not investment advice, it's simply just stuff that I'm showing you here for educational purposes. So let's have a look at um, what these ratios look like. And so here what you have is going back to the 1970s, I took the gold futures and I divided it by the silver futures. And so you have the so-called gold to silver ratio. And you can see it's currently somewhere in the mid 80s. And if you do a regression line here, you can see the medium is is roughly 80 or so so we're actually above that now again that's not to say that gold cannot get at all more expensive versus silver but it's telling us that it's it's just it may not have that much more to run relative to silver right that doesn't mean gold can't go up anymore that's not the point it may be getting a bit long in the tooth and so uh we've also shown in the past a uh, couple of months this ratio of gold versus copper, which is actually quite similar in a sense that you can see we're once again getting to sort of the upper band, upper limits of what we've kind of seen at least for the past 30 uh, plus years or so in terms of what this ratio looks like. So uh, typically the only time copper gold has is as such a high level versus copper is basically in financial, uh, you know, when equity markets don't do well. And um, that could indeed happen here. Equities may take a step back. But the point of this video is more to say that the gold to copper ratio is also getting a bit long in the tooth. So here, uh, the, the idea would be to reduce a little bit of gold, maybe add to, to, to a copper position, right? Same thing here with uh, gold to, to silver. So again, this is not to say that we that the gold run is over and that we think gold is no more upside. Not at all. It's just saying that we think relative to some of the other uh, hard assets again in this case silver particularly is, is what I want to point out um, gold is getting a bit long in the tooth and so if we look at this in absolute terms last chart and we look at say gold in in, in sort of uh, very simple chart terms you can see this is the chart of gold the GLD ETF and then if you look at the chart of silver uh, which you know has in many ways a lot more potential upside here through the lens of very, very simple and maybe overly simplistic chart analysis, you can kind of see the case that gold has not act, silver has not actually broken out, but gold has. So that's maybe another way of looking at it. Hope it helps. We'll see you again in the next video.